In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. God's Providence of Creation An amazing message of life about human salvation. The origin of the earth and the universe. Dr. Jarrock Lee's lecture on Genesis will address interesting subjects such as the providence of human creation, the great flood of Noah, the pyramid, the black hole, etc. Dear viewers, we hope that you will come to have love and a reverent fear of God from the center of heart through the message preached by a worldwide revivalist, Dr. Jarrock Lee. The scripture of this message is Genesis chapter 2, verse 15. Genesis chapter 2, verse 15. Then the Lord God took the man and put him into the Garden of Eden to cultivate it and keep it. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ and Jesse and TV viewers, Adam lived in the Garden of Eden, giving birth to his descendants for countless years. And he ruled over the Garden of Eden and the earth with God-given authority, wisdom, and power. Adam had to take an aircraft to come to the earth. It was because there is an area where the time flow stops between the second and first heavens. This area is the buffer zone between the second and the first heaven. Both heavens have different time flows, but as Adam passed through this buffer zone, he didn't feel the difference. Without this buffer zone, Adam, who had bones and skins, could have left the difference of both heavens severely. If you fly here from the other side of the earth, you will experience jet lag for a while. If there were no buffer zone between two heavens, whenever Adam flew to and from the earth, he would feel the time difference directly. But as he passed through an area where the time flow stopped, he could adapt himself well to the place he was flying. Furthermore, he could fly to the earth instantly through the space of this corridor. By the way, I explained before that the angels of the third heaven travel instantly to the earth through this area where the time flow stops. In fact, the time flow difference doesn't matter to those who consist of only spirit without flesh, such as angels, Satan, and the devil. Therefore, the spirit only being doesn't actually need to pass through the area where the time flow stops. Instead, they travel to the earth through designated spiritual passageways. Just as there are routes for a ship to sail in the vast ocean and corridors for airplanes to fly in the sky, there are also passageways in the spiritual realm. From time to time, the evil spirits and the spirits that belong to God confront each other in these passageways of the spiritual realm. Then it is the time for the spiritual warfare to break out. In Daniel chapter 10, verse 13 and 14, Archangel Gabriel appeared before Daniel and delivered an answer of God to him. It reads, But the prince of the kingdom of Persia was withstanding me for 21 days. Then behold, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me. For I had been left there with the kings of Persia. Now, 
I have come to give you an understanding of what will happen to your people in the later days, for the vision pertains to the days yet future. The days yet future refers to the days we are living now. It means it records you know, what will happen in the end time of the world. Here, the prince of the kingdom of Persia refers to the king of Persia in a physical sense, but also to the evil spirit in the spiritual sense. This evil spirit was withstanding the archangel Gabriel in the way of the spiritual realm. As Daniel continued to pray by faith without changing and feel the proper measure according to justice, the evil spirit couldn't stop the guard Archangel Gabriel anymore. Daniel prayed for 21 days like this, and he won the spiritual battle by the help of the Archangel Michael, and he could receive the answer from God. When you pray, you should receive answers to your prayers like this. Your answers depend on what kind of prayer you give to God by faith and love. You don't pray by force. You are not forced to pray. You don't pray to be seen by others. You should pray from the depths of your heart. You are not forced to pray. You don't care whether you are seen or not by others. You are not obliged to pray only because you are a pastor or a Levi worker. You should pray what you have to pray. Then God sent the Archangel Michael to defeat the evil spirits. As you pray, the answer from the spiritual realm came down you know, to you when the enemy devil and Satan are defeated. If your prayer is not from the depths of your heart, or you mumble in your prayer, or you pray with idle thoughts, or you pray reluctantly, you are in trouble. Your prayer cannot go through. The enemy devil and Satan will interfere. They interfere you so that you cannot pray. Lucifer and evil spirits interfere with the works of God with the authority of the darkness during the period of human cultivation. When the necessary measure to receive answer is filled according to justice, they cannot interfere any longer. The same spiritual law still applies today. If the passageways of the spiritual realm are wide open between you and God the Father, you can receive answers no matter what you ask for. If you satisfy the requirements to receive answers according to justice, the enemy devil and Satan cannot interfere with you. I already explained about the seven conditions to receive answers to your prayer during the seven spirits. When you pray, whether you pray by faith and with joy, it is well shown on your face, right? You can see from your face, you know, whether you pray by faith and with joy, whether you pray from the bottom of your heart and whether you give thanks. If you truly believe and pray, you know, prayers naturally come out of you and you will say thank you because you believe you have received the answer. You think of your difficulties, trials, afflictions, and other hardships when you pray. And then it's not a prayer of faith. It is not a prayer of joy. Not a prayer of thanks. Then you are not qualified to receive answer. Whether you keep the commandments of God and be faithful in all God's house, and whether you pray in spiritual love, these are checked before receiving answers. So it depends on your level of faith. Answers come you know, differently according to different levels of faith. The first and second, third, the fourth and fifth. According to your measure of faith and prayer subject, if you feel the proper measure, the answer is coming through a corridor of the spiritual realm. The answer will surely come. God will surely answer. You should believe you have received the answer. You should believe you have received it. 
then it will be done. Since you believe that you have received the answer, you can pray with joy and thanks, and you become faithful and give love. You can pray in qualifying these seven spirits, right? I hope that you can make the best use of this spiritual law and receive answers to whatever you ask. Unlike angels that consist of only spirit, Adam, who was a living spirit, couldn't fly, and thus he had to take an aircraft to come to the earth. I said the aircraft was what is now known as UFO, which are observed frequently today. Especially this year, you know, the number of UFO observations suddenly increased, and their appearance took on a different aspect from the past. Let me introduce a report made by Ucopia.com, which is a new site located in the States. Unlike the past years, quite a number of UFO observations were reported throughout the whole globe, and it makes scientists nervous. No, they don't need to be nervous, but why are they? It means they acknowledge the existence of UFO. Since they know the technology of UFO is far superior than that of the Earth, they are nervous. They worry what if they are attacked. Only a few people observed the UFO in the past, but it has changed recently. UFO appeared before the eyes of hundreds of or thousands of people, and it was impossible for the government to make up a story. This biggest sensation, the biggest sensation so far this year, was the UFO, which appeared this past July 9th in China. Due to this UFO, the Chinese government shut down the airport in the city and prohibited all the airplanes from landing and taking off. And the government is not providing a clear explanation about it. It happened in reality. An airport, an actual airport was shut down because of UFO. A few hours before the airport was shut down, the citizens observed the gigantic luminous body and they were terrified. The United Kingdom is another country where the appearance of UFO is frequent. Last October in the city of the United Kingdom, people observed a triangular UFO circling over the residential area. This triangular UFO it was also observed in the sky of Belgium in 1990. At that time, fighter planes made the sortie due to this UFO's strange shape. Last September, UN officially appointed an alien UFO ambassador. By UFO, this UFO ambassador has to be the first one to greet as an alien visits the Earth. Maslan Othman, a Malaysian astrophysicist, became the first UN official UFO ambassador. As you can see, the existence of UFO cannot be denied anymore. Those who don't want to believe this try to ignore what they see on TV, right? They say others are confused with something else, such as birds, or that it was illusion. No matter what evidence others come up with, they don't try to believe it at all. Since the people of the world cannot identify it, they call it UFO. But we do know. It is the aircraft that the people in the Garden of Eden take to come to the earth. By this aircraft, Adam made frequent travels to the earth. Whenever Adam came to the earth, he found a beautiful spot and stayed there. His favorite place was the Nile River area of today. The Nile River has close relation with the Gihon, which was the second river among the four rivers that were created with the waters from Eden. As long time went by, the God made Gihon met with other, you know, tributaries and it became the Nile River. 
the size of the river became bigger and it became you know, more beautiful. This Nile River seemed very beautiful to the eyes of Adam. Its beauty didn't fall behind the look of the rivers in the Garden of Eden, and thus Adam was satisfied with it. Adam liked to visit Nile River area. The Nile River area was like a summer home to Adam. It was a place where Adam could stop and take a rest. Now, some of you may have a question about this. The Garden of Eden is much a better place than the earth. But why did Adam like the Nile River on this earth? To help you understand it, let me give you an example. Jeju Island of this country is one of the top picks for foreign tourists. The entire island was beautifully formed. Now, what about the native residents of Jeju Island? Jeju Island is very famous and many tourists come from all over the world, right? Then they don't want to visit other places? Since they live in such a beautiful place, will they not feel like visiting other places? Of course, the Hala mountain of Jeju Island is beautiful, but they also want to see Sarak mountain and Gumgang mountain. They may visit a less beautiful place than Jeju Island, but they may find it quite beautiful. Since they see and feel strange but unique scenes and culture, they may feel something new and something fresh. It was the same with Adam. By the time, the earth was well maintained as God created, and thus it was much more beautiful than it is, as it is now. Adam could receive impression from the earth that was different from the Garden of Eden. Especially, the big and strong Nile River fascinated Adam's heart. Besides, the earth was the physical motherland to Adam. Because God created Adam from the dust of the ground on earth. Since Adam knew this fact, Adam cherished the earth very much even though he lived in the Garden of Eden. Some of you left your hometown where you were born and grew up a long time ago. For some reason, the hometown brings an easy feeling to you. As you think of the hometown, you feel peaceful and happy. From time to time, you know, I think about my hometown, but it's not what it used to be anymore. I remember my hometown you know, back in those days. I wish I could visit the town, you know, where I used to grow up, but it's not there anymore. It's not there anymore. Back in those days, after school, I went to hills behind my school, played there, you know, tried to catch larks on Saturdays, though I didn't succeed it. There were rabbits and pheasants. I tried to catch those rabbits and pheasants, but you know, I couldn't catch any of them at all. I couldn't succeed. Many things were in the hills and mountains. One thing that I used to hate, there were snakes. There were many things, including these snakes. There were, you know, persimmon trees and other fruit trees. Many insects were there. And there, was la there were lakes. It was such a beautiful town. Behind my house, there were quite big mountains, though I had to walk, you know, quite a distance to go there. Anyway, there were hills and mountains and uh, forests. In 1960s, however, they removed all those hills and mountains to make rice fields and farms when President Park was in office. You know, all were gone. And even now I visit the town, all I can see is just rice fields and, you know, flat farms. So there is no hometown for me. 
I lost my hometown where I grew up along and with my memories. I feel sad about it. You feel like the hometown will welcome you anything, anytime you visit it. To Adam, the earth was a place that had such impression on it. Therefore, Adam frequently visited the earth and ruled over it and kept it with the God-given authority. One day, Adam had a plan to construct a building on earth to symbolize his authority. He wanted to construct a unique building which could show the earth his territory in his favorite place, the Nile River area. However, his plan couldn't be carried out immediately due to a major incident that took place in the Garden of Eden. I'll explain about this incident in the next lecture. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, Using the God-given authority and wisdom, Adam ruled and kept the Garden of Eden and the earth very well. Rule and subdue it. It was the command of God. And God gave him you know, such authority. Then was it Adam alone who managed and ruled over such a vast area? Even a leader of a small group has so many things to take care of. That's why there are different departments that help the leader and there are workers in the departments. It was not just Adam alone who was busy. God gave special beings that were you know, suitable for Adam's authority to help Adam. They were the cherubim. I already gave you a detailed explanation about the cherub in Revelation Lecture 15. And so, I'll briefly explain them. The spiritual beings that God govern can be categorized into two, angels and cherubim. Angels have almost the same appearance of men, but they have wings. Unlike angels, cherubim have the look of animals, and they are varied in form. Some cherubim have a face of a man and the body of an animal. A face of a man with the body of an animal. You can find this in Greek myths, right? Just as there are many different kinds of animals on this land, there are many different cherubim. It shows how many various creations God the Father can create. It also shows how infinite his power of creation can be. In other words, the existence of cherubim shows that God the Father's power and divinity is so great and vast. Even though both angels and cherubim are all governed by God, their roles are different. Angels minister to God, and they also sing praises, and they also dance. 
angels minister to God and they dance and they sing before God. They also serve the saved children of God and they maintain the dwelling places of heaven. God sends angels to minister to His saved children. In heaven, both believers and unbelievers are assigned to angels, one each, and they record everything you do. They hear your prayers. You know, there are such angels in heaven. On earth, angels you know, minister to believers on earth, okay? Say, your dwelling place is fixed now. First, the second, the third heavenly kingdom. Suppose you go to the third kingdom. Then, angels were already assigned to you, and they are working in your mansion, the fixing and decorating, and so on. When you come, they will say, as you are not here, I managed all this. Then, you know what? You will see how beautifully the angels uh, prepare all those things for you, knowing what you like, right? They know your flavor. Say, you are a singer. Then what you sing is archived in your mansion, and it will become your glory forever and ever. You know, saying, you know, you did this on earth, something like that. And the angels are not mowing your lawn. They prepare this stuff and fix those things in your mansion. They do such jobs. On the other hand, cherubim are mainly in charge of escorting and guarding. There are ranks and orders in the world of cherubim, and cherubim in higher ranks escort God the Trinity. Let me tell you more about angels. On earth, God's children who have received the Holy Spirit are assigned with an angel, and this angel protects you, and they minister. However, even if you say you believe, there are those without an angel. When you receive the Holy Spirit, an angel is assigned to you by God so that the angel can protect you. Since you became God's son or daughter, that is, your name is written in the, in the, in the book of life, you know, Mr. Someone registered to mom in church on what day and what month and received the Holy Spirit. You know, it is recorded in the book of life. As soon as you receive the Holy Spirit, you know, an angel comes to you to minister to you on this earth. However, the angel can leave you. Some of you fall into this category. When does it leave you? When you commit the deed of the body, it leads to death. You know, according to the Bible, it leads you to death. When you commit a deed of the body that leads to death, you are dead and you're disconnected from God. Then your ministering angel ignores you and leaves you because you're dead. Your name is blotted. Your name is blotted out from the book of life. You are not a son or daughter of God anymore. So you cannot communicate with God and you cannot feel the fullness of the Holy Spirit. You cannot feel the joy because the angel left you and the enemy devil and Satan is with you. If you continue to you know, repeat the uh, deeds of the body again and again, then you are completely ignored by the angel. The angel will completely leave you. Then the enemy devil and Satan will play with you. On the other hand, cherubim are mainly in charge of escorting and guarding. There are ranks and orders in the world of cherubim, and cherubim in higher ranks escort God to Trinity. The four living creatures fall into this group. Other cherubim that are in lower ranks, usually in charge of guarding, There are records in the Bible about the cherubim that guard the Garden of Eden. Genesis 3.24 says, So he drove the man out 
and at the east of the Garden of Eden, he stationed the cherubim and the flaming sword, which turned every direction to guard the way to the tree of life. Since Adam disobeyed God by eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you know, he was driven out from the Garden of Eden. And at the east of the Garden of Eden, God stationed the cherubim and the flaming sword, which turned every direction to guard the way to the tree of life. After Adam sinned, God the Father drove them out of the Garden of Eden, and He stationed the cherubim on guard at the east of the Garden of Eden. To be more specific, He made the cherubim to guard the way to the tree of life from which the fruit of life is born. In the Bible, the records about the cherubim in the Garden of Eden appear after Adam committed sin. However, cherubim were already there in the Garden of Eden. The cherubim escorted Adam and guarded the Garden of Eden. The east side of the Garden of Eden adjoins the domain of darkness. Lucifer and evil spirits always look for a chance to tempt the people in the Garden of Eden. Therefore, God sent cherubim to the Garden of Eden to help Adam. How could Adam alone protect such a vast area? such an endless vast area. Countless cherub are protecting the Garden of Eden and Adam. They are given duties like this. In addition, some of the cherubim always escorted Adam. Adam was the leader in the highest rank to rule over the Garden of Eden and the earth. The cherubim were sent to escort Adam, suitable for Adam's position and authority. A long time ago, when a king went somewhere, there were many people who escorted and followed the king. When a king was on his way out of his palace a long time ago, you know, not only guarding soldiers, but all, but you know, other huge group of people followed the king. You know, they lined up so long. It was a song line. The king's sedan chair or chariot was big and splendid, and even the soldiers that escorted the king exuded dignity and authority. Imagine a king who was riding on a horse all by himself. Don't you think he would look shabby? Likewise, the dignity and glory of a king may differ when he is escorted or when he is not. Imagine God the Father comes down to this earth. How magnificent and sp spectacular the view will be. It is written in the Bible that archangels will blow trumpets when the Lord comes back. That's why God sent the cherubim to escort Adam. When Adam visited the earth, the cherubim followed him and escorted him. We can feel how special God's in consideration for Adam was. However, God the Father's consideration for Adam didn't stop there. He had another special present for Adam. He created animals that resembled the look of the cherubim and gave them to Adam. They were dinosaurs. All the animals and plants which were created on earth could also be found in the Garden of Eden. However, dinosaurs were found only in the Garden of Eden, not on this earth. When God created the plants and animals on earth, He used the ground and water of the earth as materials. As God spoke words in His voice, they were created as to the blueprints. I will give you detailed explanation about the creation process of plants and animals as we get to Genesis chapter 2, verse 19. By the way, the material that God used to create the dinosaurs was not from the earth, but it was the ground of the Garden of Eden. 
animals of the earth, as well as birds, were made from the ground of the earth. However, dinosaurs were special. They were not made from the ground of the earth, but from the ground of the Garden of Eden. The Garden of Eden is the mid-dimension between the spirit and flesh. It has ground and waters like the earth. The gates of the sky were opened during the flood of Noah, and such great amount of rain came down and the highest mountain of the earth was submerged. Since the Garden of Eden is so huge, there is lots of water too. So the dinosaurs which were made from the ground of the Garden of Eden were the animals that had bones and skins. Since they were created from the material that belongs to the second heaven, their constituents were different from the animals of the earth. As you examine a dinosaur's fossil, you can find a very interesting fact. Look at the screen. According to the study of their bones, people found that they had a very strong bone structure. There are elephants and lions on this earth. But why are their fossils not found? Why is it, I mean, why is it that only the fossils of dinosaurs are found all over the world? Don't you think people should be you know, curious about this? You know, if those experts, experts in dinosaurs are of goodness and believe what I say, then all the theories about dinosaurs will vanish. It will be gone. And they will know they were wrong. I'm saying it with strong backups and evidences. Dinosaurs were not created on the earth, but they were originally created in the Garden of Eden of the second heaven. They were special pets that God gave to Adam. The earth is physical space with limits, but the Garden of Eden is an endless and vast place. That's why God created that dinosaurs of such a huge size. Everything in the Garden of Eden may look similar to that in the earth, but much bigger. Even fruits are bigger. Of course, God created various kinds of dinosaurs in different sizes and shapes. There were normal-sized dinosaurs, but most of them were quite large and huge. The original look of the dinosaurs that God created is much different from what you know today. Originally, dinosaurs looked very beautiful and they were lovely. After they were driven out from the Garden of Eden to the earth, they transformed to look hideous. They became ugly after they were cursed. Lucifer was, I mean, Lucifer was the most beautiful among angels. But after cursed and driven to the second heaven, she changed ugly. Among them, there were some dinosaurs that were not fully transformed. As its result, fossils of some colorful dinosaurs were found. Related to this, a study made by some British scientists was reported by the Hanguk Ilbo and Chinese newspapers. The study said the dinosaurs, known to have only gray color, might have had a fancy look with the feathers in orange and white colors. Dinosaurs always stayed by Adam and gave joy and pleasure to him. They played with Adam and he rode on their backs when he moved from one place to another. When Adam rode on the back of dinosaurs, he had a different kind of fun and enjoyment than riding on a UFO. You know, riding on an airplane gives you different fun from riding on a train, right? Taxi riding, bus riding, car riding, 
horse riding. They are all different. Well, there is a bull riding too. It's fun, isn't it? Moreover, dinosaurs could communicate with Adam. Since they were gentle and simple in characteristics, they obeyed Adam well. However, dinosaurs were not wise enough to understand Adam's deep heart. They were just lovely animals that give simple joy and pleasure to Adam. Dinosaurs spent long period of time with Adam in the Garden of Eden. They multiplied and increased in numbers. Since the Garden of Eden is far bigger than the earth, it was not a problem when the number of dinosaurs increased. However, an incident broke out so that all the dinosaurs were driven out to the earth. I'll, it'll be explained in the next lecture. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, in this lecture, I first explained that there are passageway and corridors to the spiritual realm from this earth. When you are properly qualified according to justice, God gives answers to your prayer through these passageways. I also told you about the reason why Adam frequently visited the earth and mentioned about his favorite place. It was not deserted like today. It was full of trees and forest, and it was a beautiful place. It was not full of sand as it is now. When Adam came down to visit, it was a beautiful place with the Nile River. There were big forests as well. Petroleum is found in the Middle East, right? How is this petroleum made? From this fact alone, you can see there were trees and forests back in those days. The petroleum, right? I also explained about the cherubim that escorted Adam and that guarded the Garden of Eden. I told you as well a little bit about the dinosaurs, which were the gift that God gave to Adam. I'll talk about dinosaurs in great detail starting from the next lecture. In the history of mankind, how many people do you think have known these spiritual facts? You are listening to the facts that nobody could know unless God explained it. It's a great benefit to you if you know of the spiritual realm. Living as a Christian without knowing is greatly different from with knowing. It's, dif it's different when you know heaven and hell from when you don't know them. How can you live as a Christian with you know, just saying you believe and reading the Bible, but without knowing what is the sin that leads to death? It is well written both in Old Testament and New Testaments. This is the sin that leads to death, and so don't commit such a sin, says the Lord in the New Testaments. All of those who call him Lord, Lord, will not be saved. Only those who do the will of God can be saved. Woe to you, hypocrites! Leave from me, you evil doers. Such a word can be found in Matthew. Our Lord talked about them a lot. He mentioned about the fire of hell. And he talked about adultery. He talked about many things about sin. If your brother committed sin that leads to death, don't pray for him. It's useless to pray for those who commit sin that leads to death. And many of these things can become lessons to you. May you long for this Genesis lecture and quickly accomplish the Spirit and Holy Spirit. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Let's think over the message and pray together. Hallelujah, Father God. Thank you for your grace and love. Bless this message we heard today. Become faith and life in us. Help them to have true faith through this Genesis lecture. Help them understand how true and how correct the Bible is. The history has been unfolded the way it was recorded in the Bible. 
the life and death, fortune and misfortune, were done just as recorded. The answer is in the Bible. And Father God, you teach us as we believe what you teach us and practice. Blessing will come upon us, but not disasters. Since we witnessed, we were healed as you worked. Father God, thank you. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Almighty Father God of love, please lay your hands on all brothers and sisters receiving this prayer here in attendance. Lay your hands on all the members of the brain churches and local centuries, and all the GCN TV viewers, and those who are watching via satellites, cables, and internet all over the world, transcending space and time. Plant faith in their hearts and drive out their negative thoughts and doubts. Let all the trials and afflictions leave them. By the fire of the Holy Spirit, from head to toe, scorch their sick and affected parts, including all cells, tissues and nerves, all internal organs and intestines. Let the light of creation come upon them. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command the enemy devil and Satan, all diseases, germs and viruses, and infirmities, go away. Let the light shine on them. Scorch their incurable and long-term diseases by the fire of the Holy Spirit. Burn all kinds of endemic and contagious diseases like malaria. Let all new and unknown diseases, including swine flu, depart from them, be cleansed and made well. All epidemic diseases, such as cold and fever, go away from them. Protect them from any kinds of germs and viruses and bacteria. Heal them of all kinds of cancers, like stomach cancer, lung cancer, liver cancer, breast cancer, womb cancer, intestinal cancer, and all other diseases like AIDS, leukemia, cerebral apoplexy, high blood pressure, low blood pressure, heart disease, lung disease, diabetes, women's diseases, thyroid diseases, and all inflammations. Let them be made whole from polio, stroke, arthritis, herniated discs, and many others. Let all kinds of pains disappear from them, like back pain, headache, and neuralgia. Set them free from epilepsy, autism, depression, neurosis, and all other mental diseases. Loosen them from all kinds of paralysis, and let them get up, walk, and jump. Let them regain good eyesight and restore good hearing. Let the blind open their eyes and the deaf come to hear and mute begin to speak. Heal them of after effects of all kinds of accidents. Restore their ruptured and broken bones. Restore them from burns and let the heat and burning sensation go away from them. Father, let there be no scars left. Be cleansed from all kinds of drug addictions and poisoning. Father, regenerate dead nerves, tissues and cells and bring the dead back to life. Father, please bless them to conceive a baby. Bless them to conceive a baby. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command the enemy devil and Satan, the ruler of the air, the evil forces and their servants, go away from them. Go away, you evil spirits, unclean spirits, deceiving spirits, spirits of falsehood, separating spirits and all forces of darkness. Loosen all bonds of wickedness and darkness and go away from them. Let the light shine on them. Father God, give them strength to cry out in their prayer and empower them with the power to cast off sins and become sanctified. Let them be in good health as their soul becomes prosperous and let their family be evangelized. Protect them from all kinds of accidents and disasters and bless them to lead a successful and prosperous life in everything. Please protect your children, their home, their business and their work by the fiery hedge of the Holy Spirit, with the heavenly host and angels, and with your blazing eyes. Give students wisdom and understanding and fill their hearts with more passion and desire for study. Keep their hearts and minds from worldly things and plant into their hearts more fervent love for God. Bless your children and let them give glory to you in everything they do, whether they eat or drink or whatever they do. Let them confess and testify to the living God, I've met God, I've experienced God, and received His answers and blessings. Father God, thank you. Let all glory be to you alone. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. 
God's providence of creation. An amazing message of life about human salvation. We should fervently spread the evidences of the living God, the Creator. So that many more people can know God, the Creator, and fear Him. Dear viewers, let us meditate on God's will with today's scripture. Adam, the living spirit, couldn't fly. He had to take an aircraft to come to the Earth. The aircraft was what is now known as UFO, which are observed frequently today. Whenever Adam came to the Earth, he found a beautiful spot and stayed there. His favorite place was the Nile River area of today. Adam frequently visited the Earth and ruled over it and he kept it with the God-given authority. God gave special beings that were suitable for Adam's authority to help Adam. They were the cherubim. The cherubim escorted Adam and guarded the Garden of Eden. Dinosaurs were not created on the earth, but they were originally created in the Garden of Eden in the second heaven. They were special pets that God gave to Adam. Dinosaurs always stayed by Adam and gave joy and pleasure to him. <laughs> 